First of all, I give an all praise to God. We thank God for this opportunity to be in the house of the Lord one more time. And we give all honor to our pastor, Dr. Shelby L. Tate Sr., and also to our First Lady, Sister Doris Tate. And we pray God also for the members of the Rose Hill Missionary Baptist Church. And we thank God for this opportunity to once again be able to come before you with another good Sunday school lesson. And we are find our lesson today uh, is January 10th, and lesson number six, entitled, Call to Follow. I realize that on last week we, we dealt with the subject of, of call to proclaim. And we realized that that indicated that being able to uh, stand and deliver or to express the event that is taking place or the event that will be taking place. Uh, this is how the nature of proclaiming is done. But today uh, we move forward and we still deal with the word called. And so today we deal with called to follow. And uh, but before we get into the lesson, we can go ahead and have a word of scripture and we're going to have a word of prayer, then we'll come back and we'll go into the lesson. But we pray that uh, whatever is said or done today, that it would be beneficial to our hearts, and that we not only just hear it, but we pray that we uh, focus on it, learn from it, and adopt some of the uh, technique and ways of uh, our Lord in our lesson today. And I believe that we'll be uh, beneficial not only to him, but to our fellow man. All right? Our scripture that we chose today is coming from Romans, the eighth chapter. Begin reading at the first verse. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sent his own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin and the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the Spirit, the thing of the Spirit. I read to you five verses of the eighth chapter of uh, Roman. May God add a blessing to the reading, to the hearing, and to the doers of his word. Now let's have a word of prayer and we will go further. The Master in heaven. It's once again that we are assemble ourselves in the house of prayer. And we come before that presence, the Lord. We come with our heads bowed and our hearts humble. Thank you, once again, for yet another day. As we stand before that presence, dear Lord, we ask that you have mercy and have mercy where mercy can be found. We ask that you, Lord, that you not look to condemn us or give us the judgment in which we deserve. But we ask the Father that you look beyond our faults and that you see our every need. I pray the Father that we prepare to go into the lesson today. We ask the Father that you be able to illuminate our hearts and our mind and give us a desire to be able to do a little bit better on tomorrow than we did on yesterday. I pray the Father that as we hear uh, the scripture that is being proclaimed before us today. I pray the Father that we come away with a desire to be better followers of thee and at the same time be leaders in our efforts as disciples to be able to share the gospel with our fellow man. We ask the Father as always remember those that are less fortunate. We pray the Father that you look at those that are behind prison bars, those that are waving in the street, that don't know you in the pardon of sin, and pray also to the Father that you look at that 
man, woman, boy, girl, that is uh, sick, and then those that are afflicted, and those that are fighting this terrible virus in which we call COVID-19. We pray to Father that many have lost loved ones, and many are fearful of losing loved ones. I pray to Father that you be a comforter, that you comfort their hearts, and give them the mind to be able to look unto the hill from which comes their help. As always, Father, we pray that you look upon our pastors always. I pray to Father that you continue to bless and keep him. Give him strength to, to stand, to preach an uncompromising gospel, where some lost man, woman, boy, or girl may come with a willing desire to be saved. Also look at his companion and walk by his side daily. I pray to Father that you, you encourage her, strengthen her, and give her the mind to keep on keeping on. Then, if I, when we've done all that we can do on the side of life, you say, well done. Give thee weary souls a resting place somewhere in your kingdom, where we can praise your name throughout eternity. It is no blessing we ask in our Son, named Jesus Christ. Amen. Again, our lesson today is called to follow. And our devotional reading is Luke 9, 57 through 62, background scripture, Luke 5, 1 through 11. And our printed text is the same, Luke 5, 1 through 11, and it reads as follows. And it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two ships standing by the lake. But the fishermen were gone out of them, and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon's, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. And he sat down and talked to people out of the ship. Now when he had finished speaking, or when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your net for a draw. And Simon answered him, saying unto him, Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the nets. And when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fishes and their nets break. And they beckoned unto their partners, which were in the other ship, that they should come and help them. And they came and filled both the ships, so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. But he was astonished, and all that were with him at the draw of fishes which they had taken. And so were also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And Jesus said unto Simon, Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading, to the doers, and to the keeping of his word. Now, if we, if we look at our lesson, our theme for the quarter, as always, is called in the New Testament. In a unit theme, with the unit two, Jesus and called in his ministry. Our lesson aim at participating in this lesson, each learner will be able to, number one, recite the plot twist in Luke 5, 1 through 11. Two, explain the nature of Jesus' calling of the fishermen. Three, write a statement that rephrases his or her job in terms of Jesus' call to evangelism. All right. Now we have uh, four outlines. Our first one, shallow water teaching which is Luke 5, 1 through 3. A, press of the crowd. B, solution of the ships. A second outline, 
deep water miracle. Luke, Luke 5, 4 through 7. A, the reluctant expert. B, bursting net. Oh, footnote, obedient before knowledge. And C, sinking ship. And a third outline, Simon Epiphany. Luke 5, 8 to 10a. A, a Simon's confession. B, the fisherman's astonishment. And a fourth outline, Jesus called. Luke 5, 10b to 11. A, fear not. B, fish for men. C, forsake all and follow. And a footnote, the sacrifice of gourds and cinders. And we have a conclusion. What's my line prayer thought to remember? Again, a subject is called to follow. And if we uh, look at our lesson very closely today, we'll find that uh, the setting here is, is Jesus is, is preaching and teaching. But because of his notoriety, uh, many have heard him preach, many have heard him teach, many have saw the miracles and everything that Jesus performed, and uh, they wanted to hear more, they wanted to see more, they wanted to be near him. Uh, as often as they could. But, like anything else, uh, the master is human. And therefore, he needed rest. And therefore, he, he also needed some space. You know how it is that you can be around people all the time and you be trying to help and assist here and there. But every now and then, you need a little room. And so here in the lesson today, the Lord is speaking to uh, Simon, and 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 he uh, he boarded Simon's ship, and he asked Simon just sort of uh, just move out into the water just a little ways, whereby he could still teach and preach to the people, but at the same time he would be able to have a little space, and so he did so. And it says, as he sat down and he, and, and he taught them, and the scripture said, and it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the words of God, he stood by the lake of Gennesar. Now, the, uh, the scripture indicated that this lake that is being spoken about, which was called the lake of Gennesar, it had other names as well. And some that were familiar with Bob, the uh, Lake of Galilee, or the Sea of Galilee. And then there was some called by John, it was called the Sea of Tiberias. But in ancient time, in the Old Testament, it also was named as the Sea of Chenera. But the main thing, it was, it's, a, it's, a, it's either a lake or, or, or sea, depending on what terminology that we use. But Jesus was here. And uh, as always, Jesus was doing what he came to do. And so, but uh, his mission was not complete yet. He was preparing to make preparation as to how he would uh, share the gospel and how he would empower men to be able to do it and everything, and that uh, his phraseology that men would would know these men would no longer be the uh, uh, fishermen of fish, that uh, he was preparing them to be fishermen of men. Now this brings about uh, a point. Uh, it has everything to do with evangelism. Now we in our modern day churches, our main task is is to be able to share the gospel. We have to get out into the highway, the byway, to be able to, to seek out those that are lost, those that are out there in the world of darkness, to make sure that they hear the good news, to make sure that it is possible for them to be as we are here in the household of faith, 
make sure that they become also heirs of salvation and that the benefit of knowing the Lord and being one of the Lord's own, that they too can share in the blessing that we share. So therefore, uh, we must be ready to make the uh, sacrifice to look beyond ourselves and see the needs of others. All right? And, and, the, and the scripture I, I used in the last week lesson is very appropriate at this point in time. And that's that Romans 12 and 1. And the Apostle Paul said it very eloquently when he said, I beseech ye therefore, therefore brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. So therefore he is stating that, that since the Lord saves you, since the Lord keeps you, since the Lord blesses you, it is reasonable that you be able to render the service that God is looking for in his saints or his, or his disciples. So we see here that the Lord is preparing to put uh, his program into effect with the selection of the men that will be left to carry on this mission once he go back to glory to set at the right hand the power. Now, let us, let's, let us go back to our lesson. In verse 2, it said, and saw two ships standing by the lake, but the fishermen were going out of them and were washing their nets. And he entered into one of the ships, which was Simon, and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land. Again, we said that he entered into one of the ships. There were two of them that were there. And one of them was Simon. So he went into the ship, and that uh, he asked Simon, be able to cast out a little way uh, into the water. Basically what he was asking him to do is just move a boat off the shore. Move it out of the water a little bit and this would allow him to have space as the people would come by the seashore to sit and listen uh, to stand and, and be able to hear what he has to say. He said once he did so, he said and he sat down and taught the people out of the ship. And so he was carrying, he was carrying out his mission and purpose at this moment with the ships. But the backdrop was the people who owned the ships were the people that uh, uh, he was there to empower. Those were the people he was there to enlist in his preparation to be able to share with the world the gospel of Jesus Christ. All right? Now, the lesson went on a little bit further and, and spoke about uh, wait before we go there. Now, we got to ask ourselves that uh, do we do evangelism? And I, I think if I phrase it right, I heard many years ago say, we have not evangelized until the evangel have become evangelists. In other words, that, that we have not done our work until the saints that are sitting in the pews, until they have been taught and trained, not just to sit, but to go out the door and to the head and to the byway to be able to teach and to seek and to find the law to be able to bring them in whereby they can share in the glory of God. Okay, that's what our job is. So the question comes and we must ask ourselves, what are we catching? Are we catching any fish? In other words, are we, are we saving any soul? Well, we're just satisfied in, in the fact that uh, this is just me. 
I'm only worried about me, myself, and I. And I'm not really concerned about nobody else. And then someone said, well, that's a bad kind of uh, way to look at things, is it? But you got to be truthful. You got to look around. Each one of us got to look around ourselves and ask ourselves, what are we doing? Are we seeking the law? Are we concerned about the law? Are we being good disciples? And, and, and when Christ left, he, he left the Great Commission. He said, to go into all the world, teaching and preaching and baptizing in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost, he said, and lo, I will be with you until the end of the world. So the question still comes, what are we doing? What are, are we catching anybody? Are we, are, we, are we really fishing? Are we trying? This is the question that we got to ask ourselves as we go into 2021. And say, if you didn't do much or nothing in 2020, God in his infinite grace has smiled on us and have allowed us to be able to see this new year. So 2020 is gone, but we have an opportunity to be able to, to, to do what we didn't do in 2020 and do a better job in 2021. All right, I thought I'd just drop that peg in there. Let's get back to the lesson. Now, in verse four through five, he said, now when he had left speaking, he said unto Simon, launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a draw. And Simon answered him, and Simon answering said unto him, Master, we have toiled all night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net. Now here, here why the obedience comes in there. Say, when the Lord speaks, our position is to obey. Now, now Simon, he was the professional here. He was the fisherman. And, and he knew how to fish. He knew how to cast out nets. He knew how to draw in nets. He knew how to clean nets because he was a professional fisherman. But here, he is allowing the Lord to give him instruction as to what to do in order to be able to catch fish. Now, again, I say that was obedience. Now, we also must look at the fact that as he obeyed, he obeyed based on probably two reasons. Now, now, this is not the first time he had met Jesus because Jesus and everything had came to Peter's home to be able to help heal uh, 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 um, Peter's mother's friend to help her. And so therefore, that was a relationship there that Peter knew and knew the power in which the Lord was capable of. Peter knew of the, some of the miracles and everything that Jesus had done. And so Seth, not knowing exactly what it was that the Lord was going to do, he felt in his spirit that what the Lord and was instructing him to do was the thing to do. And so that he did what the Lord instructed him. Now, the, our commentary says, we need to follow Simon's example. That you can act for God on his timing before you know completely what he is doing. So, so we take what God said to do by faith. It means that we're not going to always know what's going to be the outcome of the action that he's asking us to take. But he's asking us to trust him and that, uh, that what he is instructing us to do is going to work for our good. Now, now the scripture in Romans says that for all things work together for the good, for those of us who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. All right? And so therefore, I mean that according to our faith, we should... You should be secure in the fact that if whatever the Lord instructs, we should obey and follow, and it will be for our own good. All right? Now, and when he had beckoned unto the departed 
which were in the other ship, they came and helped them because the back of the moment. And then when they had done this, they enclosed a great multitude of fish and their nets and prey. So Peter, after expressing that they had been out there all night and that they that they had toiled, that they were tired, and they had caught nothing, lo and behold, after following the Lord's instruction and him being obedient to the Lord, look what they just got. They got so many more fish that the nets that they had couldn't hold it all and that the net, nets were breaking. But this came about because Peter followed the instruction. So therefore, we as children of God, whatever God said do, we should do because it will work for our own good. All right? And then that's, that's called trusting God. All right? Now, but when Peter saw this, people were, were very much amazed. He was very much, uh, what you might say, outdone because I'm the professional. I had tried all the night and I in no way could have put together anything like this. So he was, he was, he was awed to the point of why I say when Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Now he realized that uh, the magnitude of the power in Christ had to be able to know exactly where these fish were, to know exactly how to do it, and know exactly what the outcome would be. So therefore, when God asks us to do something, and, there, and he has a blessing for us, and, and, and Lord don't, don't give us a little bit of here, a little bit of that. When the Lord blesses us based on our obedience, uh, we'll wind up gaining more than we ever could have expected. So this was the case with Peter, but at the same time, he realized he was in the presence of the Lord and he was seeing the power of the Lord. And therefore, his unworthiness of him being a sinful man uh, came home. So he bowed down, all right? Now, that's in response to the Lord and his goodness. We gotta ask ourselves the question, uh, are we humble? Do we feel that we should get down on our knees and be able to look up to God, thank him for everything that he does because without him, we realize that we can do nothing, all right? Now, it's better to be with him than out without him, all right? And say, verse, verse 9 and 10, say, For he was astonished, and all that were with him at the draw of the fishes, which they had taken, and so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. And so if we, if we look at we prepare to conclude, Jesus asked Simon not to fear. And one thing that that you notice in scripture, whenever the angel of the Lord would appear, that'd be the first thing he would say to put, put the mind or put the person at ease, that to fear not, that they either come in peace or they have a good message for them. Now, Jesus said, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. So therefore, in the age of Simon, that you'll no longer be catching fish. You follow me, you'll be catching men. Now, it said, unlike fish, which are killed when caught, the individual Simon Peter would catch would be brought from death to life. And that's something we should all be able to shout about. It said, the fishermen would be empowered by the Holy Spirit. And we pray that we uh, got something from our lesson today, the thought to remember, follow, follow the Jesus, fish for people, start fishing. Thank you.